Welcome back. Today you will learn how to implement Google AdSense inside of your Next.js application. So in order to get started, what do we need? We first of all need obviously an at Google AdSense account. So we have a Google AdSense account. We essentially want to go inside of the dashboard and then we want to find the publisher ID. We will later use this inside of our Next.js Google AdSense component in order to make the whole thing work. Then inside of our Next.js 14 app, use of the script component that Next.js provides out of the box in order to inject the official Google AdSense script. Once we have injected the ad script, enabled auto ads inside of the AdSense dashboard should immediately work. But I will also show you how you can create a manual ad component in order to place custom apps wherever you want inside of your app. This is pretty much all we need in order to get started. So I prepared this little example Next.js 14 app. This is just using Tailwind and it is just using some random article template I found on the internet. Before we start, I just want to let you guys know that everything I'm going to do in this video, you will also find down in the description below in case you guys want to read after you've watched this video. I would say without further ado, let's just get started. So first of all, what we will need is the Next.js script component. Actually, let us create a component for this. In order to do this, let me just quickly create a components folder. And inside of here, we create a component called adsense.tsx. We will need the publisher ID as explained in the beginning. I'm just going to call it PID. And yeah, guys, I'll be using TypeScript. Obviously, you don't have to do this if you don't like TypeScript. So let me actually create some types for this. PID is going to be a string. And all we need to do is just use this script component from Next.js. The script needs to be loaded asynchronous. So we add the async prop. The source is going to be the following. As I said, guys, everything will be also down in the description below. This is the official Google AdSense injection script. We also have to add a cross or origin of anonymous. And the strategy is going to be after interactive. I think this is also going to be the default strategy without specifying it, but I just add it either way. This is basically just going to load the script early, but after some hydration has already occurred on the page. You actually need to understand this. This is just very important in order to properly load the script. So once we have done that, we can actually just start by inserting the script down here. What I usually do is I put this inside of a head tag. I'm not exactly sure if you have to do this, um, but I personally prefer to do it like this and it works pretty great. So let's just insert it here and now we got to pass the PID. This is of course just an example PID. If you guys want to to find your PID inside of Google AdSense dashboard. I've actually prepared a little screenshot from my own dashboard. Obviously I've censored some stuff, but this is essentially where you are going to find your publisher ID. You just open up this little site navigation and you click on account, settings, account information, and then at the very top, you will find your publisher ID. Just make sure to copy that and paste it inside of your AdSense component that we just created. And that is pretty much it for the first part. Now auto ads should automatically work. That means if you have auto ads enabled, you should see stuff like Vignet ads, in-page ads, anchor ads, which are going to float at the very bottom or top of your screen, floating side, floating side panels, all that sort of stuff. And since I've just used some example PhD, I won't obviously see anything in here, but in order to double check that the ad script is successfully injected and that everything is going to work properly, we can still double check by open up our developer console with F12. We need to head over to the network tab and we need to refresh our page and let's just look for ads by Google. And as you can see, guys, we get a 200 from the AdSense API, which means that the script is successfully injected. And if your page is verified on Google AdSense and accepted and you have auto ads enabled, you should now see them on your page. But now let's say you want to place some ads in certain locations. Let's say you know some better locations to put your ads and that's why you want to place them manually. And in order to do this, let's create a brand new component and let's call this one ads banner or let's call it manual ad. Actually, I prefer ad banner. So let's use that one. Let me create a boilerplate. And then this is going to be a client component since we're going to use an use effect hook. So Google AdSense usually uses these ins blocks. I'm not actually sure what this tag means in HTML. I would have to look that up, but that is just what Google usually uses for their ad, ad blocks, ad banners, whatever you want to call them. And so what is really important here is that it has the class name of ads by Google. The style, we do display block usually and here we need the data add client and now we're just going to say see a pop and this one is going to have a unique ID as well so usually this is what it's going to look like inside of the Google AdSense dashboard you can just click on ads then you can just go to buy ad unit and then you can create your custom little ad unit and usually once you've created that you will get a script snippet by Google that you can just insert into your app and that always contains this ID behind it for the sake of 
of demonstration purposes, I'm just going to insert some random data. But obviously, you would need to put your unique ID in here. Then let us add the data at client property. And this is just going to once again contain your publisher ID. And I will just enter some random information once again. But here, make sure to insert your correct publisher ID. And let us quickly create some props for this component. So, what we will need is a data at slot, which is going to be a string. Then we will need a data at format, which is also going to be a string. Then we need the data for with responsive, which is also going to be a string. Actually, what I like to do is I like to turn this into a Boolean. And now we need to insert these props inside of our ad block. So let us grab them here and the types. Now we can finally utilize them. So let's say data at slot is going to be our data at, sl at data at slot. And we need the data at format and the data full with responsive. Then here we are just going to do data full with responsive dot to string. Now it successfully inserts the ad blocks. Now we need to actually push these ads. And in order to do this, we just create a use effect hook that is going to run only once after the component has mounted. Here we are going to do window ads by google is equal to window but ads by google otherwise it's going to be an empty array and here we are going to push an object an empty object actually in typescript we actually have to do it like this to so do window as any just like so and that should actually work now we got a type safe fully ready to use add banner adsense component actually i would probably recommend you guys to put this inside of a try catch block and you could technically console.log this um just like so and then you could put this into the try method this is how i would probably do it just like so and now it should be ready to use now let's take a look at our block article again as you can see let's say we want to maybe insert a add banner at the very top of our page just like here pretty much so this would be the location here where the image is the image placeholder in this case and now we want to insert the ad banner above it and so for that we're just going to insert the ad banner now we need to pass all of our props for the data ad format we should always use auto for the data for the responsive we should use true that is going to make sure that all your ads are going to be fully responsive no matter of the width and height which means that google is automatically going to load in the best ads for the respective size of the ad banner for the data ad slot you need to actually pass in the unique ID that you get whenever you create a custom ad unit inside of the AdSense dashboard. This is what the dashboard looks like. Um, when you click on this little ads tab right here inside of the site navigation, you should find this tab up here, which says buy ad unit. And in here you can create stuff like a display ad. This is what I usually use when I want to insert custom ad banners. So I click on display ad, and then I'm going to just create a responsive ad. Once you've done that, Google usually gives you a little code snippet that you can implement immediately into your app. And that code snippet is usually going to contain the exact same props that we're using here. Just make sure to copy the ad slot ID and paste it inside of here. I'm just going to use some random number here once again, but make sure to put in the correct ID. Now let's save. And once we take a look at our app, we can see that the ad banner is successfully being inserted. You will usually get this error, ads by Google push error all ins elements in the DOM with class ads by Google already have ads in them. I am not ex exactly sure why this happens. I do have a few apps in production that all have this error as well this is not going to break your ads or show less ads but the ads but this error is pretty much always going to be inside of your console which is a bit annoying but i haven't found a proper solution for this yet if you do know a solution it'd be nice if you could like put it down in the comments below but as i said guys this is not going to be a big deal as you can see everything is going to still work fine and when we use this little inspect element tool we can see the ad banner correctly inserted inside of our app you can just change the background real quick to see what it's going to look like let's so you don't really know exactly where the app is because your background might be white so this is really hard to see you can just create a diff element and let's say you do bg black and you wrap your ad banner inside of it just like so and now as you can see you might want some distance between this you can do this by just adding a little bit of margin to the margin margin to the bottom like so and now you have that ad banner properly inserted and now you could of course do the same thing for this little categories side panel right here where you maybe have like recommended posts or whatever in between that you could put another ad banner just like so pretty much and now you have an ad right there as well you could put one here as well and you would probably use MT instead of MB. And now you have your ads successfully implemented. Obviously, in development mode, you will also not see your ads. This will only work on your proper URL that you pretty much got verified for in the AdSense dashboard inside of your production app. But as you can see, guys, you can at least still see where your ad banners are. And that is very, very handy. Now, that is pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions, just make sure to ask them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer all of them. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.